Welcome to the Regeneration International Podcast. Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to the African segment of the People's Food Summit that has been going on uh, across the globe. My name is Precious. I am a coordinator for Africa in the Regeneration International Network, an incredible team that has put together this event. We are very excited to join the whole world in celebrating food. Uh, it's so important for us here because um, our theme is actually regenerating the culture of food in Africa. Um, we believe that most of our cultures are really connected to food and how we relate. And as a people, we've evolved with our food. Eating is actually an act of agriculture and um, how decisions are made around food and how food systems happen in the world and in our continent in particular is very important. And on this platform, we're not only bringing the voices of those who practice, but it's also the voices of those who feed most of our populations. 80% of our continent is fed uh, from smallholder farmers. Uh, for now, we will just invite, um, I think, the conversation by uh, Nelson Mutzingwa, uh, who can also just uh, share with us um, some of his experiences in the works with agroecology. Yeah, thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to share my experiences on this very important uh, day, which is the World Food Day, where most of the farmers have to celebrate. I'm Nelson Muzingo. I'm a small farmer based in the Shasha Agroecology School and one of the co-founders of the Shasha Agroecology School, a school that is not of all, but a school of action. I will share my views on how we have transformed uh, the formerly cattle ranching area into a food forest and how we have achieved localization of, of food of system based on fundamentals of spirituality and cosmic vision. We are farmers that are based in Mashingo province. Uh, this is the map of Zimbabwe that is showing us uh, Mashingo province where that dot is and it's, we are covering part of Ward 6 and 33 of Mashingo district and this is a very dry area which just receives less than 400 millimeters of rainfall. If you look at the catchment area of the block of farms where they start, the dot is the Shasha block of farms and uh, just closer to it there is the Shasha river that flows into a dam that is closer here which is the Shasha Mushi dam and this goes into Tokwe and then it goes into Runde and then it goes into uh, the Indian Ocean where you find when uh, rains are being received usually where there is no agroecology practices, especially on the basis of harvesting water, we tend to export quite volumes of water which we don't benefit any single cent to the Indian Ocean, but the Shashe block of farms, smallholder farmers have transformed an example that is very useful for me to share. We have uh, a total of um, 380 families that were resettled in uh, the seeds farms on Shasha block of farms, which formerly were just for cattle ranching and the area that is occupied. Each family in this block of farms is occupying eight hectares of land, which uh, specifically for arable and warm state uh, development. We call this self-contained units, A1 model self-contained units. And gauging on the total area that is occupied by uh, the warm states and Arable, we're looking at around 4,000 4, hectares of land, and we have spared around 11,000 hectares of land where we graze our, our cattle and, and we graze much of the livestock that we have introduced into the book of farms. We uh, come from a background that is uh, characterized by a farmers that were muted by an organization that was called the Association of Zimbabwe Traditional Environmental Conservationists, whereby this organization fundamentally it was uh, formed to enhance endogenous development, which is development that is based on the fundamentals of why people were just born as black people and what is the relationship between the people and the land and what is the relationship between the land and the sea. And 
we look around us and how does that able to transform even our livelihoods and this belief system is based on the spirituality of and cosmovision which is based on the three worlds whereby we have the spiritual world which is the spirit that we cannot we cannot see which we can just believe that there is a spirit which is connected to myself as a mortal being and that spirit will stretch up to the uppermost spirit of of of, of uh, god and uh, with all the ranks that connects the mortal beings with the special world the special world that touches the, the natural world the natural world is all living things the flora and fauna and how that is connected to to myself and how communication can be from the spiritual world via the natural world to influence decisions that can be uh, taken by by the mortal being and how now land which is very very important is, is very particular when we are talking about uh, food and how that is connected to the water and our seed resources and how should we then transform ourselves based on these three worlds to achieve total agrarian reform whereby achieving food sovereignty because this is what is how we became to be a people to live and what were the issues that we were uh, what that we're using as our mobilization um, factors we started to look at how we measure our soil results and how we have to see a living soil achieving the best results that we have to do and what is our role when we look at the soil our role is to feed the soil for the soil to feed the plants and how do we do that we had to focus very much on making manure because it is our duty to make as much manure that we can use to fertilize the soil for the soil to keep on living because it also needs food like we also eat then we also look at reviving our local seeds and food systems because we were coming into a new area but how can we then transform the new area to become a food forest whereby each farmer is supposed then to have access and control over seed resources because without access and control over seed resources it would mean that you are actually a slave within your own community when you depend on buying seed from elsewhere but you have to live on the seeds that were created by god and put onto your hands we had also to look at managing the the water system because in a dryland area like i indicated that we receive only 400 millimeters of rainfall how should we manage our water systems how should we manage the water cycle and how should we contribute to the water cycle so our idea was based on harvesting as much as possible every single drop that will come onto our place we also looked at reducing cutting down of indigenous trees like here i'm just seated outside where i'm seated under a shade of an indigenous tree and that value the indigenous trees provide onto the mortal being is very important like the oxygen that we are breathing is just coming from the indigenous trees that we were created uh, uh, along with and helping us to achieve our living as mortal beings we also looked at increasing uh, the diversity of both small and livestock. Here you can see that this is just a small poultry um, where you see the chicken, the turkeys, the guinea fowl, and coming together to actually boost productivity at farmer level. And this farmer having now all large and and small in all the gods, the donkeys, the sheep, uh, the, the chickens, the kinfowl, the pigeons, the dogs and cats, all included because every living livestock has got a value that is it provides to a living farm. We also looked at uh, developing our homesteads to become centers, or, uh, centers whereby other farmers can come to learn like i have indicated that we are not a school of war of walls and papers but we are a school of action so we have to transform our homesteads to become living centers where others can come and learn from the host the farmer who is able to link and connect to other farmers having all that is mobilization issues we had to look very deep down and 
to find out how we have to connect ourselves to our spirituality and cosmology. And by this, we then we're looking at organizing rituals and ceremonies within our community where we have to bring every totem, whether a woman or a man together to celebrate the diversity of cultures and to celebrate the connection with our spirituality. And by this time, we will then have to be having lots of different dialogues and sharing experiences and knowledge, but apart from it, connecting ourselves to our spirituality and cosmic vision, that gives us guidance on what kind of food, the rainfall pattern, and as well, what kind of seeds that we will have to emphasize and provide large acreage to be, uh, to be grown. So, Performing these rituals and ceremonies, mainly you would see that we focus very much on that crop, which is Rapopo, which you don't buy from the shop, but which is a crop that is supposed to be collected from a granary of a farmer. And the utensils that you see are supposed to be utensils that we have to make from our own uh, indigenous resources and the, 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 the calabashes and all that. Some of those are crops that we grow and then we have to use this as we celebrate our spirituality and cosmic vision. We also had to look at how to perform um, Thanksgiving ceremonies, bring all together the different kind food crops that we could have harvested at every season and then celebrate that before we test and informing and thanking our spiritual world that the yields, the food, that we have produced was very, very good. And we, before we test it, it is very important to have that connection such that we can be kept healthy, reduced from any infections or even diseases, and that food contributing even to our incomes at household level. The positive achievements, that we, positive results that we, we have noted out of our um, our practices include the following. Under agroecological farming practices, we have uh, revived a different kind of seed varieties that we have brought together and shared and exchanged among us the different farmers, which this seed that is contributing to, uh, to, 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 to the food production that we require at family level. And this food contributing quite a lot again to improving healthiness of the soil and even covering the, 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 the <coughs> our soils from any different kind of, of effects that may affect, suppose there is a dry spell that can affect our, our area. We have also transformed our area to become food forests where we have introduced so much diversity of different kinds of food groups. Like you can see that man is just standing in a food crop and you can harvest as much as you want that can even contribute to your nutritional requirements we have also uh, done a lot of work on um, uh, increasing uh, diversity that relates to introduction of houses and that relates to introduction of different kind of food crops that uh, will then generate a lot of work into our area and as much as we had, this is this was based on how much water that we were harvesting in our areas and how, how much that water was contributing to recharging our groundwater supplies and able to make us farmers that enjoy uh, production every season, whether even it's a dry season. We have introduced some varieties that were lost in our area. And these varieties are again uh, being exchanged by the different farmers and increasing diversity at household level. As we perform um, seed and food fairs, you would see that we are measuring diversity that is increasing at farmer level. That goes again into those varieties that we have introduced and uh, the different kind of food crops that we grow. And as far as seed diversity uh, in, uh, to food sovereignty is concerned, and as we celebrate uh, the World Food Day, and how do we see the work that we're doing in as far as working towards food sovereignty is concerned? We've looked at the factor that it is very, very important that we have to introduce and we have to revive different kinds of seed varieties, the cereals, the, the pulses, uh, and, and all these other varieties and these displayed at farmer level whereby we have to measure diversity increase and we have to celebrate together as farmers as we come 
where we organize seed and food fairs, where we organize food, fest, food festival, we have to celebrate this development in the form that each farmer is supposed to measure how he or she is developing towards achieving seed sovereignty. Also integrated a lot of uh, different age groups and also post makers as we celebrate uh, the issue of seed and we also introduced the, the participation of youth through via the schools such that at least once they see we catch them young and then they can be part of the process that will help develop in the future generation and then be expanded in the different kind of communities. How do we then uh, spread this knowledge, outscaling it in such that it reaches many uh, different kind of levels. We have seen uh, this being happening at the farmers' fields, and we have seen this happening at seed and food fairs, and we have been dialoguing with policy makers at district, provincial, or even at national level, whereby we bring in farmers from the different areas to learn from the experiences of other farmers where we emphasize a lot of farmer to farmer exchanges and farmer to farmer uh, training where we have to learn from the examples and the practices of the different farmers. We have uh, seen dialogues being organized between uh, government officials, farmers, and even policy makers, traditional leaders. And these dialogues are helping us to uh, celebrate ourselves uh, to bring the voice of the farmer because the voice of the farmer is the only voice that can lead to achieving food sovereignty. Without the voice of the farmer, you cannot achieve uh, food production. It is the important farmer that has to be listened to and then let him and boy her pioneer the journey on food production. We have seen uh, ourselves being connected globally with these experiences, practices, and uh, this photo is out, uh, when we hosted the international um, medium conference of uh, La Via Campesina. In we had a field tour at that level with the farmers from elsewhere and celebrating the struggle of food sovereignty. Thank you very much for taking your time to listen to my voice and uh, also. I'm very proud to be part of the speakers on this very important day that we celebrate our food. Thank you. Thank you so much uh, to Nelson. And so um, this is so incredible. And thank you so much for sharing with us your knowledge. What an incredible uh, approach to regenerating food cultures and food systems in Shashi, Zimbabwe. Um, Nelson touched on probably how their work is based on three fundamental aspects of life, you know, more than just the human life. Um, the ecological aspect, uh, livelihoods, social and cultural dynamics that are strongly tied to how we live and how our cultures have evolved. Um, I really liked, uh, Nelson, the Thanksgiving aspect uh, of after your harvest. This relates so much um, to the creation of what the movement has been trying to do for the past few years, building an abundance mentality. Um, you're only, you can only be thankful if your mental state accepts that you are really abounding and progressing.